I think I have a stalker and my life could be at risk. Whoa, hold on. <laughs> Pause. This started so sweet and just turned. That's not okay. That's insane. I can't help you with this. This is really a terrible story. Hi, I'm Ruby Rose, and today I'm going to be your agony aunt for It's Gone Viral. My husband was on a really important Zoom call and I was really bored. Yep. So I thought I'd make him laugh by standing in front of him and flashing him when it was his turn to speak on the call. I completely forgot that there was a massive mirror, oh no, on the wall behind and all of his co-workers saw me flashing him and inadvertently them. How do I play this out the next time I see them? From Amy. Amy, just don't, don't see them again. Don't, I wouldn't, don't put yourself in that position. Just, uh, or you can come up with some kind of paranormal story and get started now, like on your Instagram, social media, just start planting the seed of the craziest thing happened last night. This woman that looked remarkably like myself was running around the house naked. Does anyone know any mediums? And then like wait a week, give it some time and say it happened again. This naked woman that looks just like me ran down the street. I'm thinking of calling the police. So that way you can kind of come up with this story that there's some haunting in your house by this woman that looks like you. And then maybe they'll, they'll buy it. Probably not though. Five years ago, my cousin was getting married and his dad is a vicar. So he, so he did the ceremony. It was a lovely family affair until I got my younger brother absolutely wasted and he was found having sex with the mother of the bride. Whoa, hold on. <laughs> Pause. This started so sweet and just turned really bad. Let me, I got to okay. Five years ago, my cousin was getting married. Awesome. His dad is a vicar, so he's doing the ceremony. A lovely family affair. Fantastic. Wish it ended there. Until I got my lovely brother absolutely wasted. Okay, that happens. And then he was found having sex with the mother of the bride in the church toilets. That doesn't happen. That's not okay. That's insane. The, the evening ended, there's more, the evening ended with my uncle escorting him out, which meant he, his overriding memory of the, di of the day is kicking out my brother instead of officiating his son's wedding. Well, yeah, did, I me did you mess up? Did I mess up and should I confess to being the instigator? Anonymous, oh, what a surprise. Um, well, I mean, how old is your brother? If he's underage, then you need to fess up real quick and, and get your story straight and you need to apologize to him. And you also have to start questioning why you're a pusher. You know, why didn't you just have some more drinks, enjoy your night? Why did you have to get someone else drunk? It's strange. If he's not overage and he's a full grown man, who doesn't have any problems with alcohol and he had, you know, it's not like he's 10 years sober and you got him drunk. If, if he's just a regular dude, older dude, enjoying his life, he can't blame you for the fact that he got drunk, that he had sex with the mother in the church toilet. There's way more than alcohol that just comes into that planning. That's not a, oh, I had a few drinks. I know what I'm gonna do. Have sex with the mother in the church toilets. That's gonna be normal. No, there's 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 some deep family stuff you guys might wanna discuss with a real therapist, not me. I can't help you with this. This is really a terrible story. Yesterday I was at work and they asked me to make a cake mixture for tomorrow's cake. Make a cake mixture? Okay. Like you make the mixture and they make the cake or you just make it out of a box. This was the first time I've been trusted to do this. So I was super excited. See, that's why I don't understand the cake mix thing. But now first time I'm understanding. I've been trusted to do this. So I was super excited. All went well. This is how these all start. All went well. Next. Until I realized that one of my fake nails was missing. By the time, uh, by this point, the cakes were in the oven. And so I just kept my mouth shut. Mm. Should I go in and buy all the cakes tomorrow or should I just leave it and ho hope my nail isn't in one of them? No, you just go and buy cakes. Hey, this is the first time you've made cakes and it sounds like you're making it out of a cake mix, which is fine. But I don't know if you need to like worry about saving them. I think you can just buy some other cakes that don't have na fake nails in them. Also, if this is the first time they've ever trusted you with something like this and someone chews on an acrylic nail in there, I mean, no, you'll turn them off cake. You'll turn them off you. You'll turn them off acrylic nails. You don't want that. You, no one wants that. And in, and in a COVID kind of time, ooh, no, ma'am. You got to throw those cakes out. Don't even think about eating them and just go and buy some nailless, nailless cakes. Obviously, my advice is going to go great. Oh. Okay. I reversed my mum's car into a lamppost this week and blamed it on a FedEx driver. Ha what? If I knew that was a thing, I just blame everything on a FedEx driver. How can you blame him? My mum doesn't want to get it fixed until she's sure that there's no CCTV footage of it and has asked me to and has asked the shop I was coming back from if they could look at it for her. 
Should I just own up and admit it was my mistake or hold out and hope the CCTV doesn't show anything? Let me reread that because that was a lot. I reversed into my, no. I reversed my mum's car into a lamppost this week and blamed it on a FedEx drive-on. So rude. <laughs> Poor guy or girl. My mum doesn't know, my mum doesn't want to get it fixed until she's sure that there's no CCTV footage of it and has asked the shop that I was coming back from if they could look at it. So should I just admit to it and admit to my mistake or hold out and hope the CCTV doesn't show anything? Um, just admit to your mistake. I mean, it's, it's you drove a car into a lamppost. These things happen. I mean, not to me, but I guess to people and lampposts. And I think it's, you, you don't have to come up with an excuse where you throw the poor FedEx person under the bus because what if every time now they, they're delivering mail and your mum's like, throwing darts at them or something, or if they lose their job or, and worst case is the CCTV does show it and you have to sit there and watch it and be like, that's, that's not me. That's not, that is clearly a FedEx driver that looks awfully like me. No, I would just admit to it. Honestly, it's the best policy. You're gonna probably have to pay for the car and apologize to the lamppost and the FedEx delivery guy and me for making me answer this question. Well, this next person wants to have a full therapy session right now. Okay. I get the I get the train to work every morning, and at the second stop, the guy always this guy always gets on. Each morning, he moved closer and closer until eventually he sat opposite me. You sound like a stalker. I mean, for noticing this, but I guess he does too. We started chatting. He seemed nice, and as we went to get off uh, at the end of the line, he gave me his number. Okay, I texted it later that day, probably a bit soon, and we arranged a date very soon. He didn't get the train the next morning, but I received a bunch of roses to my work that evening. First red flag. That's the first red flag that he might have missed the train and he sent you roses. I thought the first red flag was that you kept noticing that he was inching towards you each day over the course of a number of years on the train. But all right, that's a red flag. Might mean not to send roses to people. I hadn't told him where I, oh, okay. She should have done, she, her wording's backwards. I, I hadn't told him where I worked. I mean, yeah, but it's also super romantic. I don't think he stalked you there and like, you know, got up at 8 a.m. and followed you to work. He probably just looked at your Facebook, man. Okay, the date was at a pub and we had fun. But towards the end, he asked how long I had lived with my dad. Okay, I'm getting, this is a bit weird now. Now I knew I hadn't mentioned that, so I got a bit freaked out and said I should go home. That is a bit weird. Yeah, I'd feel a bit odd. It depends on, you if you're like an oversharer on social media and you literally have photos with your dad being like, love living with dad, you can't really blame anyone but yourself. That I don't know how private you are. I'd missed the last train, so he offered to split a taxi. Split a taxi, that's not exactly romantic. We did it and on the way he asked about my brother. Again, I knew I hadn't told him, okay, this guy's a sociopath, like there's no way. Or you, when you get drunk, you black out and tell him everything. When I got to the bedroom, I noticed the taxi turning around the bend and stopping. He got out and walked into the house opposite my bedroom window. He had been watching my house the whole time. What do I do? It sounds like a Liam Neeson film. Um, well, I would turn this into a script and I would send it to all the studios and see if anyone would like to make this into a film. Um, this sounds a lot like you, which is event, not you, anyone listening, but the, the TV show. Uh, look, here's, here's the deal. Either the guy's crazy and you should probably move house and, or give him some boundaries and say, hey, listen, like I really like the date and everything, but the stalking part, that's not something I'm into. Or uh, this poor guy just lives across the road from you and just knows these things because he's just happened to see his neighbor doing X, Y, Z over the course of however long you guys catch the same train. It makes sense that you'd catch the same train if you live in the same street. So this poor guy could actually just be the sweetest, nicest guy that's super observant or he's a, he's a, psych a psychopath. So I had 50, 50 chance. Take a risk or not? I don't know. I, I thought they'd be more like, you know, I dyed my cat pink on accident and help. But these are like, I think I have a stalker and my life could be at risk, help. It's like, oh, there's another number for this. And <laughs> maybe I'm a middleman you don't need in this situation. Hey, what's going on? I'm Kevin Hart. Hi, my name's Eric Stone Street. Hi, I'm Margo. I'm Journey. I'm Jeremy Clarkson. I'm James McAvoy. I'm Daniel Radcliffe. I'm Rebel Wilson. I'm going to be translating some Scottish tweets for It's Gone Viral. On It's Gone Viral. Ooh. On It's Gone Viral.